To be very honest, people know exactly what is happening in this country, most especially APC people. You just have to take a listen to what this man has to say. Prince Mustafa, APC chief thing, speaking boldly, I mean, these people know that President Bola Tunubu is not doing anything. Making emphasis on the renewed hope agenda, that they are yet to witness the old President Bola Tunubu and his cabinet promised us. Also, plead with the people to endeavor speaking up whenever they see things are going the way they shouldn't. Despite the fact that he's an APC man, we need more honest and courageous people like Prince Mustafa. Kindly take a listen and let us know what you think about everything he said in this video. Don't forget to subscribe for more updates. Enjoy. Okay, I think we should start by uh, trying to get your own assessment of the president's address yesterday. Uh, some people have expressed the uh, view that saying, well, 2.5 million jobs will be created is not enough organizing a national youth conference against uh, the background of the uh, uh, fearless in October protests uh, yesterday, you know, across uh, some states of the country also would not uh, seem to be enough. And all that talk about economic stabilization bills will seem not to be the way to go. But the more embarrassing part is that some people out there, lawyers, economists, I've been saying that in that speech, that the president of Nigeria lied about ways and means, foreign direct investment, and some of the other details in terms of what this government has done about monetary policy and fiscal policy. I said earlier on this program that, that if that were to be confirmed to be true, it's must rule. But what do you think in terms of uh, the details of that speech? Um, first of all, good morning, Nigerians. Happy Independence Day. Um, it's, uh, they're good. Uh, we're in a difficult position right now in terms of the economy. Um, Nigerians are not having a very good time. They are not having an easy go of it. So it's very important that we're honest with ourselves as a political party, as the party in, in governance, in office, in order for us to make real progress. And some of the, um, I don't know the fact whether some of those details are true or false, especially in terms of the ways and means. I think that those who are responsible for the statistics can look into it and we can have clarifications on that. But in reality, the truth about it is that Nigerians are not feeling the renewed hope agenda. The truth of it. Two protests in the space of three months shows us that we're not actually performing as we promised Nigerians that we would. The Renewed Hope agenda itself that Mr. President wants to implement, you know, is a laudable um, agenda. But the reality is, from my perspective and from the perspective of a lot of young Nigerians, we don't believe that the people that the president has assembled to carry out these these agendas, these initiatives have the capacity to deliver on what the president wants. And that's just the fact. That is why we're seeing that a lot of issues are occurring. The economy is not doing so great. Um, price of food is skyrocketing. And we need to take a look back. We need to be honest and realistic with ourselves if we want to make real progress. Um, as a nation, Nigeria right now, we are not standing where we should amongst the Committee of Nations. And this is simply because some of these policies, some of the policies are essential and are needed. For example, removal of the fuel subsidy, it's essential. Stabilization, same currency, it's very important, you know. Um, going forward, we must implement that. But other policies that the president has put in place and the people, especially the people in charge of trying to implement this, I don't think they understand what they are supposed to be doing and are not getting a grasp of things. If you look at their ministries, for example, realistically, statistically, without emotions, how many jobs have been created? How many jobs did you meet when you assumed office over a year ago? How many have you created? How much income have you generated? How much revenue? How many people have you given jobs? It's one thing to read out speeches. It's another thing completely to deliver on the promises. Nigerians are expectant. Nigerians believe 
believe that they should be further ahead of where they are right now. And we have to be honest and realistic with ourselves. If things are not going right, the president must make a change as soon as possible so that the people who have the competence to do the job can get in and do the job and deliver on the Renewed Hope agenda. There was a lot of promise. A lot of us believed in the president, believed in this government before coming in. And what we're seeing compared to what we believe, if we're being honest with ourselves, except maybe we don't want to be honest and we just want to keep saying things will get better, things will get better. But for things to get better, you have to have implementation plans. You have to have an idea. A typical example is the flooding, you know, where... Uh, I, Aya, were you saying something? I couldn't hear something about flooding, then I'll come in to ask my question. I just want you to finish that point on flooding. Okay. Yeah, for example, the issue of flooding, it's a, it's a shame that there's no plan in place so that flooding can be prevented forever. You know, it's, you're looking at, for example, uh, existential issues like the drying up of the Lake Chad Basin, and you have Meiduguri that is less than 200 kilometers away from Lake Chad. Why can't you build a channel? By building a channel from Meiduguri to Lake Chad, you've solved several problems. You've created new businesses that can never be flooding again. It's a base model for starting projects. You can do the same from the Bainway to Lake Chad, you can do the same all over the country. So you need creative leaders who can deliver on this renewed hope agenda. What we are seeing is something completely different from what we expected. And the president must make a change because a lot of people are expecting a lot and believe in him. Right. So therefore, if he's not able to deliver, it won't be the people around him. Okay, so I want you to now break down yes, this I change guess. you're asking for. You said a lot of things. But uh, hit the nail on the head. What kind of change are you expecting? You are yourself a member of the APC. I'm sure maybe at fora or yes. in events. So what kind of specific changes? The reason I'm asking is because in his speech yesterday, he talked about creation of 2.5 million jobs. Um, you are relatively a youth, so just about exiting the youth category. But he's talked <laughs> about the plans for a national youth conference have, as well. He exited, all right. The na a national yeah. youth conference as well. Are those the kind of changes or yes. efforts or moves that would at least restore? Because it looks like hope is lost now from what you've said. I, don't, I think people have moved from being expectant to um, hope being lost. But were those things enough to restore hope? And if they weren't, what specific changes are you looking from this administration and the president in particular? Um, let's hit the nail on the head and let's be direct. First of all, we expect a cabinet reshuffle at the very least. A lot of non-performing members of the cabinet, more than 50% of the cabinet are non-performing. No one knows who they are and it's quite unfortunate. Um, we expected so much more, so we expect that from Mr. President. As for the youth conference, honestly, I believe it's a very laudable idea. Majority of the people that have protested in the last three months, whether it's opposition or not, is irrelevant. They are Nigerians, and majority of them are young people. There should be a forum to engage these young people, to be able to have an idea of the challenges they face and the creative ways of generating solutions that are all-inclusive. The idea in itself is extremely laudable. Um, you know, engaging people is extremely laudable, but, you know, to be honest, I have also been part of previous um, sort of conferences like this, and they don't exactly meet their target. That's if we're being realistic. And secondly, and even more importantly, a number of us young people um, felt now I consider myself part of the young group rather than the youth. I'm not part of the youth anymore. Um, but a number of us young people um, over a year ago felt that Mr. President wasn't given an opportunity to run. Um, we challenged the status quo. We wanted a convention in the APC. And through the efforts of the young people, we brought about a convention which brought about Mr. President. And in that process, a number of us, specifically myself as a young person, I sat with Mr. President and we had an agreement. And to this day, the agreement is yet unfulfilled. So for me, it's difficult to come out to convince young people to tell them that if Mr. President has an agreement or the system has an agreement with you, there would be those deliverables. So it's very difficult. So we must see not only promises, 
but deliverables, deliverability on your promises. You must be able to say A and deliver on A. If you don't deliver on the timeline, there must be steps to deliver on that timeline. Young people need to be encouraged. We don't need to, just like you're saying, I, a lot of people are feeling hopeless. And it's not wrong of you to say that. It's not wrong of any Nigerian to feel that way. But what are we doing to make these differences? Because if you look at the reality of it, there's only maybe 15 months left thereabouts of governance. After that is electioneering. So if you don't achieve any critical steps within the next three, four months that would guide the next 12 months, then we're going to be here a year and a half asking Nigerians, telling Nigerians it's not our fault, it's the fault of the past. But in reality, it's still our government. And if we're not honest with ourselves, if we're not willing to say the truth and listen to it, then there's a big problem because we're in office now. All we need to do to succeed, the easiest thing to do to succeed is just do the job. Do the job that Nigerians gave us to do. Do the job that we told Nigerians we were capable of doing. And if the people that Mr. because the vision is great. I believe in the vision. A lot of us believe in the vision. But the implementation of the vision is where the challenges are. And we expect more to be done. That's fact. As people in the party, we expect more. As Nigerians, we expect a whole lot more. OK, I mean, from the way you sounded, it looks like the government is not meeting expectations for you. And uh, the, the truth is, when the government is not meeting the expectation, you see the kind of things like what Dr. Abati pointed in the speech. There were a lot of untruths in that speech. Uh, the president talked about 30 billion investment. No, it was 30 billion commitment in FDI. That's what Doris Aniti had said. And the one that is most egregious is the on truth of the fact that they've cleared ways are based. You know, that money is still a debt on our books. It's been securitized for the next, I think, close to 30 over many years down the line. And our future generation will have to pay for it. And the president coming out to say it's been cleared. Anyway, this National Youth Summit, would you like to be a delegate? And if they call you and say, Mustafa, <laughs> be a delegate, what would you be saying? And I also want to ask you, would you do it for free? Or you will collect the delegate allowance for those 30 days? <laughs> um, uh, thank you, Rafa. It's always interesting having an exchange with you. Um, um, I'll start with the delegate one, then, then go back to this speech. Um, like I said, I don't really consider myself a uh, youth. I consider myself a young person. So maybe an advisor or someone who has perspective from experience. I'd like to be something like that, you know, but to say a delegate to come and speak, not so much interested. I've participated in so many, I've led so many across country. I've done quite a number and we must learn to cultivate the character of letting those that come after us have the opportunity to express themselves, to engage themselves. I cannot continue to occupy that space so that other people would not have the chance to. I would let younger people who have more zeal, more energy, who can add it to what we have can be much better for the country. I'll let those ones delegate money. It's, uh, no, that's, that's funny. Um, not interested. Uh, that's for the others. So. Um, but in terms of success and the ability, I think the idea, like I said, the idea in itself makes a lot of sense. But the worry is its implementation. The people who would be heading its implementation, um, you know, what we've seen, you know, has not truly been encouraging, to be honest, you know. What we've seen is it's not by skill, competence, merit, your ability to deliver that, you know, you're occupying certain positions, which is very unfortunate and very realistic. We've also seen that um, a number of these are from a certain sect of, of the country, which doesn't also make sense. It doesn't add up. A number of decisions don't actually quite add up, except maybe we're just looking for one-term governance. You know, if we want this to continue, we must make rapid changes. And this youth conference is an opportunity for that. 
Am I getting something wrong? Is it that the SAPA has hit you? Because you were so in support of this government the last time you were here. You had to complain like this, my brother. Who's I, that? I, what I was am. happening? Now? Is it that the SAPA has hit you so much? Don't, don't get me wrong. Eh? They, they didn't buy your electric car. No, cars. don't get me wrong. They didn't buy I your electric tricycle. They are not giving you an electric tricycle contract. Is that why you're talking like this? <laughs> you suffer, my brother. No, of course not, Ruben. <laughs> no, let me clarify, Ruben. I like those questions. It's very interesting, but it's important. More than anything else, I'm a patriot. I love my country. Even when the previous president, at some point, things were not going right, we were the ones who led the forefront. I am coming out at this point because, first of all, the government needed time to settle. 16 months is more than enough time to show where we're projecting ourselves to go. That's number one. Number two, this is a critical juncture. If we don't make these changes within the next three months, we cannot be asking the people in 15 months, what are we going to showcase for it? Who is going to vote for us? So my own is, let us succeed. Let us succeed as a party. Let us succeed as a people. I spent the last two months going around. I, I went to so many places, China, Europe, and Bahrain. Bahrain, when I was in university in Glasgow, the, the Arabians used to talk about Bahrain like it was something else, but today Bahrain is, wow, it's unbelievable. So if you look at what is going on around the world, I want the best for my country. I don't okay. care who is in Prince office. Aldo. I don't care what is happening. I care how Prince my Aldo. country is functioning and how well it's doing. Prince Aldo. Yes, yes, Ruben. Okay, uh, let's go beyond the Tinubu administration. This is supposed to be about 64 years of uh, Nigeria's independence. And earlier on on this program, I quoted a Punch newspaper. The editorial in Punch newspaper yesterday, October 1, had uh, you know, some interesting things to say about Nigeria. I'll just quote some specific lines from that editorial. It says, at 64, Nigeria is a total mess. It is a deformed adult, adult child at 64, standing on false structural legs. Nigeria has lost its way. The editorial stated, do you agree that Nigeria has lost its way? And if you agree, why? I, I, I think we are still a sleeping giant. I think we have tremendous potential. Um, Nigerians all over the world are flourishing. We are number one in almost every field that we choose to. Um, in terms of resources, in terms of the things that we have, human capital, natural resources, we're top. But where the problem comes in, it's our ability to identify those with leadership qualities to deliver. Leadership is technical. People don't understand. Leadership is, is a science as specific as being a pilot or being a brain surgeon. But anybody wants to sit behind the wheel and fly the plane, you're going to crash it. This is what keeps happening. We think that by giving any odd person, you know, that's it. He can go and You cannot ask anybody to sit behind the wheel. So we've had some very good pilots behind the wheel and Nigeria has made progress in certain areas. But in other areas, we have people who don't have an idea of what to do. And this has been something that has been in our system for over the years. So what is the way of grooming leaders today? How do you become a leader in Nigeria? How do you, what kind of skill, what kind of technical ability? How are you recruited? How are you groomed? How are you raised as a young person? What kind of inspiration do you have? Who do you look up to? transitioning without having that way of grooming young people, the right set of young people to take over the reins of affairs and guiding them through, we keep going to be repeating the same problems we're having, which is the exact same problem that I'm speaking about. It's not about having just people occupying positions. You need people with vision, people with understanding, people who know what to do and how to go about doing it. Those are the critical things. And until Nigeria is able to do that, 
you know, we would not be in, in a place. What are the plans that we're putting in place for leadership and how to groom them and how to grow them? Okay. Look at any serious yes. country in the yes. world. They are leadership schools, you know, things yes. like that. Prince. So that's what that's what I think needs to, to happen, Ruben. Okay, Prince. Uh, Rufai was uh, suggesting to you that if you were invited to be part of the youth uh, conference, uh, whether you will agree or not, well, uh, youth conference would be too small for you. But if you were to be invited to come and <laughs> be a minister at this time that they are trying to rejig the uh, cabinet, <laughs> would it be a good idea for you to go and... Uh, you know, support uh, President Tinubu to, uh, you know, tweak things uh, a little bit. Yes or no? Um, to be honest, uh, yes, I will, I will offer my services to the nation if I'm called to serve. Of course I will. I'm an industry leader in my field. I have the capacity to deliver, and I will deliver on what the task at hand is. That is what the president needs. The president needs Nigerians with the ability and the capacity to deliver. The president needs people who understand the vision, who worked hard with him, who know what Nigerians need, who understand the pains of Nigerians, and put Nigeria first, not their personal interests first. That is the issue, and if I am called to serve, I will serve with honor and distinction. And a lot of these problems will be a thing of the past. We'll be looking at the future rather than talking about things in the past. That is what I have to offer. So you want to have two aldus as ministers? I said your brother is already minister, so you want uh, to have two aldus <laughs> as ministers? <laughs> All right. Well, let me just say that I, I don't know if Nigerians are ready for that. One, two brothers from the same family as ministers in one cabinet, you know, one administration. But let me ask you, since we're talking about governance, leadership, you talked about young people, bright minds. What, what's your take on what's happening in your state? I know your family is quite close to the former governor, Yahaya Bello, so of course I had to ask you, and these fresh charges um, instituted against him by the SEC, 110 billion naira, and this conversation around the present gov governor shielding him from presenting himself to the SEC, he's actually wanted at the moment. What's your take on that? In respect of what you said about leadership, how leadership must, you know, we must have better leadership in Nigeria, has that demonstrated good leadership? Um, to be honest, I, you put me in a very tricky position. Um, uh, to be honest, uh, the former governor and I, you know, we've not seen eye to eye maybe on so many issues. So um, putting me in the spot to comment about him would seem as if, you know, I'm being maybe antagonistic or whatever it is. To be honest, um, I've listened to what he's had to say. I've listened to what EFCC has had to say from news articles, media reportings, just as, as you have. And, and the truth is, you know, we must all be one way or another law abiding. If we believe in the system, we must submit ourselves to the system. I understand the fears that, you know, he has about, you know, an attempt to try to embarrass him or whatever it is, but if he truly feels that he is innocent, I honestly believe that, you know, he should, you know, go ahead and, and meet them. Nothing will happen. That, that's the funniest thing. Life continues. He's not the first to go to EFCC. He'll not be the last. Go and acquit yourself, avail yourselves to them, and, you know, go to the court. EFCC is not actually the juror, you know. They're not the executioner. They're, they're nothing. They're just supposed to do their reporting and submit to the court. The court will then determine if you are innocent or guilty using the facts presented to it. So I, I think it's quite basic. And I think that it's much ado about nothing. And if we keep at this, it's just, you know, it's not good. We shouldn't be having this kind of conversation today's day and age. That's, that's the truth. That's my perspective. Uh, so a couple of things. I just want to get this clear. Uh, you say you want minister. Which portfolio <laughs> would you want so that we can settle it out? You don't know. Angels are passing. No. Then secondly, this year I have been you say you don't want to comment about. You forget, he's the one that recommended your brother for minister. And he stood for your brother as minister. Uh, so... I don't know. You say you don't see eye to eye with him on many cases. I'll, I'll put that to Because if, you know if you want to be minister now, Ododo we have to recommend you. And Ododo and Yaya Bilo are fine. <laughs> so, <laughs> do you want to retract some um, of the things you said about Yaya you Bilo? Know, 
<laughs> all, I, all I know is that uh, I have my agreement with the president and with Mr. President, and I expect you that do -do. You know, it will be fulfilled. I'll leave the rest to that. Um, the, rest, the rest of it is that, you know, in terms of uh, His Excellency Yaya Bello and His Excellency Governor Ododo, who I, I really like Governor Ododo, actually. It's just he's in a precarious situation, you know, so I, I don't really want to say anything about it. I don't want to say anything about anything. I don't have any issues with His Excellency Yaya Bello. I, you know, I believe him when he says he's innocent. I also believe EFCC when they say it. But I'm not the person, so please go to court and let the court decide who is going to be. As for, you know, I, I think people should be given what their specific skill is and what their competence is, so they should do what they are good at, you know. So that, that's all I'll say. Yeah, well, well, you know what I'm you're not, good I'm at. I won't say too much. Please, Aldo, what are you good at? What, what are you good at? Just say it. <laughs> We've been talking about hitting the nail on the head. As we wrap up, in one, in 30 seconds, what are you good at? Because you have talked about, you know, the best brains to go and serve. So what are you good at? And where, where, which ministry do you think your, your service would be, would be best appreciated? Um, I'm an innovator. I'm ahead in science and technology. I'm number one in electric vehicles. And I love it because the reason I say number one is I, I know you have Meta AI on your phone. Just Google or just write on Meta AI top seven electric vehicle companies in Nigeria, and you see EMVC as number one. So I am number one in my field. So um, I don't know, science and technology, anything related to that. Elon you know, Musk of Nigeria. <laughs> Elon Musk. Because, indeed, yes. indeed. Yeah, uh, Elon we Musk will serve. of Nigeria. <laughs> I, think, I think Dr. Bosin Tijani should watch out. Innovation like, yeah, and technology. Yeah. Someone is, is going <laughs> for that job. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Chris.